So the challenge when refactoring is, uh, so let's say uh, nowadays we try to like follow solid principles and design for change. But what type of change? Because if you read the, and understand really in depth uh, the open closed principle and the, in general the solid principles, you can't actually design for any kind of change. A design open to any type of change is, is so difficult to understand that you cannot actually uh, use it in practice. And it takes a lot, a lot of effort to do something like that. So the idea is to open for change, but not for everything, only for the most uh, probable types of change. And then if you get surprised sometimes, that's it, you need to refactor something. As long as it's not very often, it's OK. If it is more often, then you, you have a problem. So what we are doing is, whenever we have a discussion about design in, uh, in our team, I start asking, so I start thinking, brainstorming. So what could change in the future? What are the types of things that you uh, the types of features that we could add or things like that. And then I do the minimal uh, design in order to open up for that type of change, nothing more. And of course, you need to be prepared to refactor at all times, because sometimes you'll be surprised and that's OK. Now, uh, what we are using, uh, the focus of this workshop, will be uh, the first two solid principles. So we'll not talk about all of those. Uh, and I want to recap what, what these two are. Okay. So single responsibility is principle says that every class should have a single responsibility. And their responsibility should be entirely encapsulated in the class. Now, the first question that developers ask is, what is a responsibility? Okay. And maybe the first question is, what is a class? <laughs> what is a class? I hope not. <laughs> um, another way of stating this principle is that any class or method should have only one reason to change. Or things that change for the same reasons should be in the same place. The other should be separate. But the very interesting question is this. Uh, what's the responsibility? And actually a responsibility means to whom in the organization it is responsible. Because, you know, uh, we use classes, we design our systems to be used by people. And so why do you need to change things? Because somebody asks you to change things. And it's most likely that the HR people will ask you to change things in the HR stuff, and the accountancy people will ask you to change things in the accountancy stuff. So that's who the classes are responsible to. Okay. Um, so if you look like this is the, the standard example of what is not single responsibility. It's because this first method is something that's responsible, like for HR or whoever is computing salaries. This one is responsible to some technical guys that you know, manage the, the SQL server or the database. And this stuff is maybe to managers or something like that. So you have three different responsibilities in this class, but because there are three different people who will ask you to change things. So that's a good thing to, to remember. <coughs> uh, yeah, this is another one. It's like a PHP. I see that a lot also in Java, by the way, uh, where you get like name, ID, email, gravatar, 
and then also finding. Um, that's another example of breaking the single responsibility. Because you have, why would this change? Because somebody will ask you to change the rules of the game. There, maybe there's another way to define the winner. You are using another type of dictator or another board. Okay. This one will change if you change the, the board. So that's actually uh, something if you change like the structure of the board. So that's something that kind of fits here, but this one doesn't fit here. Why is the winner on the board? Um, and of course you know that. It's like the manager classes are the classes where you put everything that doesn't fit in any other place. Also known as functions.php, utils, Right. How can you find single responsibility principle violations? Where well, the easiest one is this generic class names, where you cannot tell what the class does based on its name. Uh, when the methods do very different things, like it's very obvious that these two are very different. If they are in the same class, then we have a problem. Or if you are really uh, honest with naming things, and you rename something to like a good long name that describes what it does, and you have a lot of ends in there, you can be pretty sure it's not single responsibility. <clears throat> so this is uh, SRP. The other one principle that we focus on is open closed, which is basically says uh, the software entity should be open for extensions but closed for modification. Now, these principles are very nice, but they are very hard to understand. So, what the hell does this mean? I like this uh, type of uh, description. So, you shouldn't mean brain surgery when putting on a head. This is open closed. The idea with open close is that you don't have to modify a class if you want to change something that's not core to its uh, what it does. Okay. One of the best examples is walking. Uh, it's still we haven't got this right yet. Okay. We are still have adding log uh, calls, log methods calls inside uh, classes that do something else. But the core responsibility is actually something different, typically, and logging is just a, a, a non-core behavior. If you need to change the, that class, right, to change the logging message, that's a violation of the, of the open close principle. <coughs> but there are more subtle ones. Uh, this is like the, the typical example for open close principle. Well, you have a shape type and a shape, and then a rectangle that extends the shape and uses the shape type for this. And then you have a circle that does this. And you have on the other side the graphic editor which draws a shape, but it basically <laughs> checks for the type to hold the right thing. So what happens now if you add another type of shape? Like a square. New you have to extend this to a square and then add an if here. Why would you need to add an if here? No, no, the right panel. Sorry? You no. The, right panel. Well, the way this is written, you, you have to. Because it checks. Does it in the rectangle? Well, that's another problem, but I'm not talking about that. That's actually a violation of contracts. If you are using, uh, if you derive a square from a rectangle, you are violating the contract of the rectangle class. 
but that's another story. The contract of the rectangle class is that whenever you change the, the width, it doesn't change the height. And you violate this doing uh, if you inherit a square from a rectangle. But that's a violation of risk of substitution. It's another story. Okay. So if you go if we go back to this, writing the code this way would mean that every time we need to add something there. So you are changing something that is not core to this. It's not core behavior because you change something in another part of the system. It's like the key to open close means. Now this is much better, but there is a catch. Um, so if you have this, and the draw method is in, in the, each classes, you just call draw here and don't care. So this one has a clear responsibility, this one has clear responsibility. If you add a new shape, guess what? This one doesn't care. open closed but now there's a catch remember that I told you that you cannot open to all types of changes so let's imagine that you're using this to draw more shapes okay and that's the simple shape draw stuff but then the the manager comes to you and says so we need to draw all the rectangles before a the circles. <laughs> because it's faster, I don't know, or something like that. Or because we want to show the rectangles first and then show the circles. This type of code, which is open, so now it's open for change, it's open for extension. If you add a new type of class, it's not open for extension if you have to do something more complicated here. That's why I'm saying that you cannot be prepared for all types of change. And even by following single responsibility, open closed, it's virtually impossible to do that. So unless you figure out that there is a very good chance that at some point somebody will ask you to do this, you will not design it to open the type. And maybe that's okay. In this case, it's a very simple thing. And then you could probably refactor it in a few minutes and go with it. But what happens when these things set up and you get kind of a change that blows up the whole system? And even worse, when you look back and realize, yeah, but that's actually kind of, you know, I should have expected that. Okay. Uh, so, going back here, how can you extend the module using basically the plugin mechanism <coughs> or inheriting from the class? Because we said open close applies a module level as well as a uh, class level. At class level, there are basically two ways one is inheritance, and the other one is delegation. Now, we used to think that inheritance is a very good thing. Uh, and the design thinking nowadays has changed because the problem with the inheritance is that it creates a lot of strong coupling between classes. Whenever you inherit a class from another class, it's a very strong relation. It's something very difficult to reflect on. Because you tend to call like parts of the method from the base class and then call something more and then call another method from the base class and so on. And it gets very convoluted if you have like three, four, five levels of inheritance, there's, it becomes really, really hard to reflect. So the way we are doing this, and the industry has learned the hard way, is that it's much better to use delegation and dependency injection from the point of view of changeability. So what does this mean? I'm sure you are probably are used to the idea of dependency injection, but maybe you are used to, not to the pattern, but with the fact that, I don't know, Spring injects stuff, and you don't know how it 
it does that. Right, you mark it, inject, and that's good. Well, it's, it's a bit more complicated and it's interesting because it's actually a design pattern. And the idea is to pass all dependencies of a class as parameters. So like if you have core behavior, you keep the core behavior there. But if you want to lock something, you pass the lock in. The lock. If you want to compute something that's completely different from that, you pass something that can compute that stuff. And now what happens is that by using uh, interface implementation, you can pass in any type of thing that works with uh, that interface. And this means that you can extend your system without changing much. That's the whole idea with dependency injection. Now there are actually three main ways of doing dependency injection. There's a fourth one which I don't like using a factory. But the three ones are, and these are in the order of preference, is constructor injection where you pass everything that is mandatory for the class, you pass in as a in the constructor, as a variable. Everything that is not mandatory, you set as a property, or everything that's needed only in one method, you pass in as a parameter of the method. Now, unfortunately, most dependency injection uh, frameworks use this. And the reason is simple. They cannot use, uh, they cannot instantiate a runtime with a constructor that has parameters. It's much more difficult to do that. So they give you, you have to write a parameterless constructor and then they set the properties for it. But it actually misses on this part because it's much better to see in the constructor everything that's mandatory for the class. It's a much better design. But so anyway. Why don't you like factories? Uh, no, I like factories. But when you are using factories with dependency injection, it's an additional layer of indirection. And you start to be very confused about what is going on. Yeah, but isn't it easier to test them sometimes? Depends on the objects you want to create? Could be. I mean, I'm not completely against it, but I, okay. I generally try to use the other ones. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, <laughs> this is just a quick like, theoretical introduction. And now, of course, it's time to code. So it's GitHub Mosaic Works CRG. I want to paste somewhere this so you can see it better. actually asked around uh, for some old code that's ugly. And somebody came up with uh, this piece of code and they gave it to me to use for this workshop. Um, you can run it. It has an embedded Tomcat. So you need the uh, Maven to run it. You can run it directly as it is. So, <coughs> clone this thing. Yeah. 
Okay, so did you manage to get the code? what it does. It's a very simple survey.
because this is a legacy system. Right? Like any detail can mean something. Uh, I'm going to give you a hint. If you look at the uh, this code, Now, why do you think this is like that? Because first it was only one step and then another step was added. Yeah. So basically each case is a, another step in the uh, circuit. So adding a, another step. Just reordering. Or reordering step. These are again changes that you can expect. In the screen in front of us, what would you, how would you refer to in this situation? Well, we'll see. <laughs> in a minute. Let's focus now on what, what could change. Maybe an infrastructure or stuff like how the data, data is saved. Um, yeah. Framework. Like, yeah, you, maybe you could change the kind of like the database. Okay, let's say it's a pretty good list. Now from these things, which are most probable to happen, because they, they all can happen, but not all of them are equally probable. Yeah, that's probably one of them. And Probably also reordering steps because you know, attending a step is a good one. Um, so you see, this is kind of the thinking that I go through whenever we discuss all this. Because we have various choices, and then I start wondering so what could change, well, what can be the next thing. Like, they could ask for, I don't know, a new type of question. And okay, to do that, we need maybe a question uh, entity, a question class that we can add to the thing and uh, manage this. So if I have a really bad code like this, 
to start looking and see so how can I encapsulate it, how can I extract the questions. Uh, if I'm looking at like, there could be a conditional question where this already tells me that, you know, uh, I should have a question class with various, like a question interface with various implementations, maybe something like that. But let's try and pick this one because it seems like it's, it's kind of the winner. Okay. So now if we look, remember what we discussed about single responsibility and open growth. Okay. What would mean here to add a new step? So I probably, let's assume the easy case that I need to add this at the end. If I need to add this in the middle, it's already a tough trick to think. It would be K6, my model dot put something, probably stage and six, because this seems to be like <laughs> everywhere. And then various other things. I need to. So I'm now adding code here, but this is a survey. Why should it care you know, about this? So how can we refactor that? Let's assume we need to add like 10 steps in the future. And it's a pain. So what can you do? Pretty well. And there's the exercise. <laughs> you have the tests. So feel free to play with it and try to refactor it. Discuss with your peers. If you want to draw something, start drawing. But first make sure that the test pass. Okay? Controller. Yeah, 
approach this problem? What yes. were your thoughts? We extracted the, uh, the bodies of the switch cases and to what they call some kind of an anonymous function for now. Okay. And then put those in the list to get rid of the switch. So we just get the correct uh, anonymous the function from the based on the events. Okay. So you started from switches. No, I tried doing that and then I had the problem because it, well, they are somehow interconnected, so it was a bit strange. I, I tried something different, and I'll show you. Uh, First, you a little bit about the switch, so some method just creates a model and um, map, creates the map as information. The initial method, the model and view, just reads the parameters in a method, creates an object with the, those parameters. Users sense the object of with the parameters to fill the map, mm -hmm. fills the map and returns model. But the issues we encounter is that the switch generated four or five smaller methods for mm -hmm. every case. And we have a lot of methods. And this switch is uh, somehow intriguing as uh, stage uses piece of stage one, stage three uses piece yeah. of stage two. Yeah. 
that's kind of the part when you have to understand a bit better what it does because it's like it actually sends data to the page and then it gets it back so it's like it's doing a, a request response stuff but yeah anyway the purpose was actually to figure out like to focus your effect uh, towards the goal that was the idea and when I started looking at the code, um, I, I started a bit after you, but I started refactoring. Um, and my purpose was to extract something that stage something, you know, stage processor, stage whatever, okay? a general thing. But in order to get there, I had to first um, Let's go to controller class. <clears throat> the first thing I, I did was to is it? I think it was process this time. Um, ah, uh, yeah, this one. So I tried to extract like the smaller uh, case stuff and it turned out that I wasn't happy with that. So I went back and then I extracted the whole, a whole class. And to do that, first I extracted the full body of this method into a process stage method. And then I tried to make it static. So maybe you've heard about it. It's, it's uh, it's a method in legacy code when you refactor is called uh, pure functions. So you extract the class, then you make it static, and when you make it static, the compiler tells you what it depends upon. And then you make it non-static, and you pass in everything that it needs. <laughs> you make it static again, and if it compiles, then you can extract it into another class. So that's what I did. Um, and. Can you, can you see the process stage? Uh, so I, yeah, the method, of course. That's what I'm going now. So now basically what I did was I separated the stage processor class. It's very clear. I'm using dependency injection here. So you can see, at least you can see everything it depends upon. Uh, let me make this easier to read. So it depends on four things. Not all of these are actually helpful because I think, like, if I'm looking at the list of parameters, the servlet request is something completely different from the others. So I probably, one of the next steps in refactoring would be to get rid of this and instead of passing the request, pass in something that's actually useful inside the class. And the result of this processor is a map which is the model, okay? It takes the request, it turns it into a model by using various stuff. So at least now I know what's the input and the output. Uh, it's not very nice, but it's a bit clearer. I, I have a question here. So from my perspective, the main issue with this, and like the root cause, is the lack of a model. Because it's yeah. not really a model. The hash map, it's like, yeah. it doesn't say anything of about course. the data structure. Yeah. So what we started with was to introduce a model and then see how we, we make the we can evolve the model such that it, it uh, makes the processing the nice. Thing. And but that's the other way of refactoring it and it's perfectly valid. So I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I just favored this one for now. But you could also start for, from the model, encapsulate it and work with it. So. It's so okay. anyway, your plan is to replace the hash map eventually? Of course, oh. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's obvious that that's a problem. Um, now, what I have is I have the process stage method, and it has some common stuff here. And then I extracted each of the switch, <coughs> like you did. Mm -hmm. Only now it's separated. So I can actually read this stuff because <laughs> before that it was kind of ugly. Um, and well, this is where I stopped, but 
the idea now would be to somehow be able to, instead of having stage five, stage four, stage whatever, to get a general way of doing the stage, and then various implementations. And the challenge is to figure out uh, what these things are used for. Because then you need to, kind of, why do you have stage five with uh, these variables and not with other variables? And this is where you need to understand a bit more how the application works and so on. And Romanian. Uh, sorry? And Romanian. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> Google Translate. Yeah, I thought it was fun to, yes. <laughs> to have it in Romanian. So, um, uh, I, right. I, I also um, did um, try to find out what are the dependencies, and then I made a stage class, and um, I'm a few steps away from going through all the stages and just looking which one is applicable, and then add, um, I'm now putting in the map and it adds all the questions to the map if it's the correct stage. Okay. Yeah. So it's another way of doing it. So I just did this in like 10 minutes. It was yeah. very easy. But anyway, so the point of all this is not actually refactoring, but whenever you have legacy code one and whenever you have design, when you want to design something, one of the questions you ask is, okay, so what how can I design this? And for me, one of the guiding principles is what can change, because that's the most relevant question nowadays in 90% of the situations. When you have legacy code, it's even more important, because if you add a question now, or if you add a stage now, it's very probable that you'll get more stages to add in the future. That's how things work. I don't know why. Would you scroll up to the constructor of this class? The constructor gets a lot of stuff in. Yes, but I see that uh, there are only four yeah. parameters. This is oh, all. So you is. also do the reading of uh, I know CTN and stuff like that from HTTP request. For now, yes, and that's what I said. I, I should replace this with something else because it's not nice, right? <coughs> anyway, so the time is up, but if I want to leave you with just one thing. When you design, or when you get a request, or you know, think what can change. Because if, if you make these decisions when you design, and you open up to uh, the most expected type of changes, it will typically get faster. And it's not that hard if you, uh, if you do it in the first place. Now, if you already have legacy code, and you uh, yeah. You need to add something. That's the moment when, you know, if we are adding a stage, it's very probable that people will ask us to add more stages. So how about making this process faster? What can we do? And I think that if we go on for like another maybe half an hour, an hour, you get to the point where you can add a new stage. So it's not that difficult, even with ugly code. Well, yeah. <laughs> Right. So sorry for keeping you out of the break, but yeah, no we'll start the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to leave your feedback.